In my last video, I demonstrated how I built a 6 inch or 150 millimeter digital readout sensor for my lathe X axis. In this video, I will show you how I made a much longer DRO sensor for my lathe Z axis. I began this project by making an enclosure to hold my rotary encoder using 20 gauge sheet metal. But I was not satisfied afterwards because it turned out to be too small and I was afraid that it would flex and wobble. Instead I used a larger piece of channel that I cut from a discarded treadmill frame. It measures one and a half inches deep, four inches high, and three inches long. The metric equivalent is 38 millimeters deep, 100 millimeters high, and 75 millimeters long. I drilled the mounting holes for my encoder centered near the top of the channel. Before I could drill the holes for the idler shaft, I needed to make an idler wheel. In this design, the timing belt is attached to a flat piece of steel like a violin bow. You could say it was fit as a fiddle. <clears throat> An idler wheel guides the flat steel and the belt over a toothed encoder pulley. I needed to use a 2 inch idler wheel to allow clearance between the pillow block bearings flange and the encoder housing. I made my idler wheel from 2 inch aluminum round stock. My finished thickness is 7 8 inches or 22 millimeters thick. I cut a 1 16th or a 1 and a half millimeter groove to the width of my flat steel plus 10 thou clearance. The metric equivalent is a quarter of a millimeter. After I cut the groove, I drilled and tapped the wheel to accept a quarter inch grub screw to keep this wheel aligned with the encoder pulley. Afterwards, I noticed that there is not enough friction between the flat steel and the wheel to spin the aluminum wheel when the axis is moved. There is a good chance that the wheel can be replaced with a solid piece of bronze or another synthetic material. Next, I cut my flat piece of steel to 36 inches or 91 centimeters in length. My flat steel is 1 half inch by 1 eighth inch or 13 millimeters by 3.2 millimeters and powder coated. It was salvaged from a broken patio umbrella. Other options commercially available are 1 half by 1 eighth steel flat stock, 5 sixteenths or 7.7 .7 millimeter square key stock, and aluminum flat stock that is used to secure the ends of a chain link fence. I drilled and tapped 632 holes into the flat steel located 3 8 of an inch from both ends. I also drilled 5 30 seconds clearance holes located 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters from each end. I cut a length of timing belt 36 inches long, then attached it to my flat steel with short 6 30 second screws and washers. I placed it in between my wheel's groove and calculated the distance from the center of the wheel to the inner groove of the belt. I also measured the depth from the end of the enclosure to one of the encoder's pulley's tooth. Subtracting one measurement from the other equals the distance from the end to the center of the idler shaft. I marked the location then drilled 5 16 holes in the channel on both sides. I laid out and drilled the holes for the flanges and later drilled the 5 16 hole slightly larger to allow for clearance around the wheel shaft. I secured the bearings in place with 632 screws and nuts. I previously drilled and bored a 5 16 roughly a 8 millimeter hole through the center axis of the wheel. Next, I lined up the wheel between the bearings and slid my 5 16 steel shaft through them all. The shaft had been previously cut to length so it would be flush with the outside of both bearings. Before I could test fit the flat steel and belt, I needed to reduce the diameter of my encoder pulley at its narrow end, slightly from 0.5 to 0.45 inches, or from 12.7 
to 11.5 millimeters. Otherwise, the pulley would rub on the flat steel and the belt would not engage with the pulley teeth. I removed one screw from the belt and test fitted the flat steel and the belt between the pulley and wheel. Satisfied with the fit, I removed them and carried on. Several times during this project, I cut 6 32nd screws shorter using nothing but a pair of good quality wire strippers. My next step was to mount the housing to my lathe. Luckily, my lathe has a 5 16th drilled and tap hole in a suitable location, which I used to fasten my housing to my lathe using a bit of angle iron, a couple of 632 screws, a 5 16th bolt and lock washer. I reinserted the flat bar and the belt through my housing, then fastened the belt again. Next, I supported the flat steel and belt level and parallel to my lathe. This made it easy for me later to measure its offset from my brackets. Next, I made a pair of brackets to clamp to my lathe. They are low profile, so they won't interfere with my tailstock travel. To lay out my lathe's profile on the bracket, I traced the profile on two thin pieces of sheet metal, cut the waste away with a pair of snips, and then traced the profile again on two pieces of half inch flat stock. I milled the waste away with a milling machine. Instead of milling the profile, I could have cut it with a steel bandsaw, a hacksaw, or even a bayonet saw. After the bracket was milled, I drilled and tapped the hole to join the two pieces of steel together with a socket head screw to form a clamp. I clamped the bracket onto my lathe, then measured the horizontal distance to my flat steel. I also measured the vertical distance from the top of my clamp to the top of my belt. I then cut two pieces of half inch or 12 millimeter steel round stock to length. I milled part of the round stock flat, then I drilled and tapped holes to fasten the round stock to the back of the clamp using 632 screws. I also drilled and tapped a 632 hole into the bottom of my round stock. I attached the flat steel and the belt with a 632 screw and a washer through my previously drilled 532nd hole. My last step was to repeat this process for the other clamp. In this project, I mentioned several times that I used 632 screws. A slightly larger metric equivalent screw is a 4mm screw. Its tap and drill size is 3.4mm and its clearance drill size is 4.5mm. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. In the next DRO video, I will show you how I built an enclosure and mounted my electronic boards. Goodbye for now and thanks for watching.